stand by to take a load on this side. Right. It's getting off. Yeah. One, two, three. Welcome back to my build series, Building an Expedition Camper. And today is a really exciting day because the camper is starting to take shape. The actual camper itself, building out this total composites camper box. So today we start with attaching the camper floor. Join with me and hang with me. Okay, it's going to be fun. Slowly up and clockwise. Where are we going? Clockwise. Okay. Got to go to the rear to clear the front. I'm going to pinch my fingers. Right? Yeah. All right, come down there. Back. Come down there. Go. That's that's good. Coming over. Yep. I'm pushing in. Hey, stop. Okay, we can get to the hole now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, actually, while we're here, let's go back about, like, just straight back about three inches. Straight back. Just make it a little more room. That's okay. good. That's okay. good. That's good. I was so blessed to be able to do this project with the Hunter RMV team because they brought not only a wealth of experience but great hands to help out in lifting these heavy floors with their plywood and fiberglass and steel reinforcements within them. Is that cutting uh, loop around? As well just stop once you start doing to get to that point anyway. We had three drills set up, each with a larger bit. So we started with a smaller bit and worked up to the final size bit before tapping these holes. And that helped tremendously. Nonetheless, the drill bits themselves did get hot and dull as we drilled into this heavy steel that's inside the floor, which is there to bolt the actual floor to the subframe to attach it to the chassis. Hey, would you grab uh, in one of my bags uh, the hearing protection? I think it's yellow muffs. Perfect, thank you. This thing's getting really loud. Okay. Yeah. Screaming what? along here, I know, what? exactly. Yeah. We were able to make quick work with all the hands we had with multiple drills, drill bits, as well as hearing protection, eye protection, and everything else we need to keep moving along. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I'm making any progress. You just switch bits up bits and try a different, do, do something else. I haven't even gotten through it this smaller bit yet. No? No. Let's, uh, let's about switch three quarters bit. in. I mean, you're, I, I'll bet it's that bit. I think his bit's really weak. Yeah. Can we try to something else. Yeah. Nonetheless, the fiberglass extrusions that the steel is embedded within within the camper floors is very abrasive, and so it definitely dulls the bits down, as well as the hard steel that's inside these floors. And so it does take some time to get through there. We did find out that generally starting with the smaller bits always work better and working up to bigger bits, but even the hammer drill the corded hammer drill I'm using here is actually did not make as quick work as an electric cordless drill and that was also more convenient to move through these. So it just took time. Fortunately, we had many workers with the Hunter RMV team to work through these holes. Close. Oh, I just Fortunately, the Hunter RMV team had a great plan. Curtis was awesome with really clear directions and approaches from his experience building these camper boxes. And ultimately, we worked our way around to the 10 holes to get them drilled and tapped in the exact spots that mounted up to the subframe. And that worked out ultimately really well. Just took some time to drill through these and get them all done. We did have to rotate the subfloor around in, in partial segments to be able to get access to the floor, the, the holes in the floor. Some of them were directly over the rear tire. About five eighths in there. In addition to just taking some time to drill through these as well as some drilling fluid to help keep the bits cool and sharp. Don't forget bits coming down on my face. Yeah, it's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good feeling though. No. <laughs> it also, we had to make sure we didn't drill through the floor and so we have to manage our depth of cut. So we're just getting through the steel supports but it's not past that. It's, 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 yeah. squeaking it's dry, like, uh, it's yeah, hot, it's steaming. Hot. Yeah. yeah, maybe more. We also did our best to make sure that the drills had vertical alignment going in these holes and so other eyes helped out there. Yeah, we're almost an inch. With 10 of these half inch holes to drill and tap, it did take some time to do that. Oh boy. But once you finally drill through the steel to the required depth for the bolts, and you get these holes tapped, boy, it's a great feeling. And so one by one, we're getting these done on each side and then rotating around for the other side so that we can bolt this floor to the subframe. We got, the good news is we got the depth. The bad news is this tap is stuck. Yeah. And I think this will, yeah, see that's a lot easier than the hammer drill. 
Doing this project with several hands really helped because it gets exhausting holding a drill up and pushing up into the floor. Dang. And keeping that perfect alignment and helping each other out with many tools and many hands. Let's see if we can get some action on this. But after about two or three hours of drilling and tapping, we finally got her done. I'm uh, getting a little tired. My arms are getting tired. Yeah. Uh. To the best of us. <laughs> Were these two tapped or not? These are all done. These are all done on this side. These didn't get marked though when they got yeah. That's right. What's going on? Yeah. Being a bitch. Uh, is it? A few suggestions for others building an expedition camper is certainly have extra drill bits and drilling fluid handy as they will get dull drilling into the FRP extrusions and steel. And also extra drills and batteries ready on hand because you will use them. <laughs> Look at the edge on it. It's like all rounded edge. Yeah, it's I getting it dull. Yeah, okay. Several hours of drilling and the team of many hands with both my friend Rob and the Hunter RMB team. I am so Ooh. lucky to have them help me with so, this project. Thank you there. all for your time. Somebody's got about a quarter to go. And after several hours of this, yeah. getting debris, just got to get my arms a little rest here. Yeah. We drilled all the holes and got to tapping and mounting. There we are. Tapper! Film you doing this. Nice. Yeah, I got that nice and started for you, huh? I think you finished it. <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah. Look at that go. Nice. Is it going in? It's going in. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Wait, that's not my bolt. What? That's not the bolt I provided. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second there. <laughs> Let's get the right bolts. <laughs> oh, this is the right bolt. Yeah. Okay, they work? They work. Okay, yeah, that's All good. Right. Get hey guys, camera. let's let's get uh let's get on this and keep this. One more down. Another one bites <laughs> dust. <laughs> boom boom boom. <laughs> boom 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 bites <laughs> dust. <laughs> After a few hours hanging out underneath the camper floor, you can definitely have some fun. We chose to hand tap these holes just from a assurance that the tip would not break and to get them perfectly straight. All right, well, we're fresh. Let's rotate this bad boy around. Four boys can do it. Well, let's find out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got it. We got it. Okay. If someone wants to pick up on that side case. I got this got corner. Oh, uh, I'll make sure it doesn't it doesn't uh, right where the rails were I'm lifting yeah. the whole floor. Lift piece. it up. One, Four two, inches. three, up. Five inches. Do it. There you Keep go. Going. Set it down. Okay. That makes it even easier. That makes it easier. Okay, cool. Nope. You've done this before. Yeah. And we've got all of our holes tapped, and so we're ready to just place this and glue that and then place this and bolt it in. Okay, uh, I know we test fit the rear, but let's test fit the front just to make sure there's no hangups and boogers. Looks great. It is one and a quarter, it's not about. Okay. And so then I want to have one and five sixteenths on each there side because then okay. I can just fill that crack. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put this up here and we're just going to hold left, it in. Measure right. Yeah. And then we're going to drill with eighth inch drill bit, okay. which we already have. And then we're gonna, I have a countersink out here so that our top bolts will be flush with it. Come my way, so just a little bit. Stop, tap a little bit, stop. Yeah. Sure. I really yeah. wish they just put in a uh, Where's my pen? auto hubs with an electronically shiftable transmission. Get rid of all these Gun. cables and the shifter and everything that's in the way. In addition to singing, we also talked about our preferences of four wheel drive systems and how to control them, as well as trails so to nice ride about on. Replacing them on the Rubicon yeah. is you can just have pull them one right out. Yeah. yeah, you can, you can pop one yeah. in. Yeah, they're yeah. easy to change. Uh, and they're uh, strong. It's on the tail yeah. house you know, the training yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Like in reality, like you're not going to be doing the Rubicon yeah. in this with your house. Larger mass. No, no, no. I have no plans to do it. I could care less about that, okay. right? Okay. This is coming okay. here. Don't forget your burgers are getting cold there. I'm going to. Well, what, maybe we should eat before we glue this up then. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to eat. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's eat before we glue I, it up. I hate bringing are we you okay cold? on yeah, this yeah. or we should have moved it? <laughs> the bearer of cold food. Yeah, is this thing stable enough? And one more suggestion, definitely take care of your biological needs before you start applying the adhesive sealant. Because once you do, you need to move quickly and it can be messy. I like a nice bead. Yeah. I like this one. Give me some bead. And this here is why we call Curtis the cake decorator. Maybe I could show you 
<laughs> Blue this. Did you write that? Yeah, I don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> We used the recommended sealant by Total Composites and went through many sausage tubes each day. The sausage tubes are much better than the smaller caulk tubes because you use so many of them. We probably did apply more adhesive sealant than necessary, but with Curtis and his experience, it was pretty clean work. We did not even need uh, rubber gloves for most of the work and most of the time, but many hands definitely makes it go smoothly and quickly, and it's pretty easy to clean up. What I don't want to do is drag this bottom glue and make a big yeah. wipey mess yeah. over yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Frame or anything. All surfaces of the extrusions in the camper floor were thoroughly cleaned with rubbing alcohol before we applied any heat to sealant. This also gave a great chance to clean other surfaces of the camper floor or the entire camper floor before we put it into place as we're doing here. Another suggestion, have plenty of bottles of rubbing alcohol and paper towels on hand. Well, let's locate our holes. Yeah. We've got to go a little bit to we the driver's side. Yeah, we here. should. Okay. And a tiny bit forward. Yeah. Uh, that's this, the unscientific this, measurement. The back <laughs> this way. I can see that. Mind me. It was, back it was like an inch passing. inside. Yep. Okay, it's got. Well, move that one first because we're pretty good up here. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit more. A little more. Five. Right there. Right. Okay. That's closer to straight. Yeah, look. In let's see how that. How's your guys' Okay, look? now that's awesome. Now we're, 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 we're really good here. Okay, oh, okay, this has got to go down. go ever so, I can move that's, probably a couple of mils that way. Towards us, yeah. They should come to us a little but bit. But we got to go straight towards us, I've been only like a couple mils. Okay. I don't get too much. Yep. <laughs> back, oh, right there. there. Right there. We perfectly aligned the camper floor with the mounting holes in the subframe and the holes we drilled in the camper floor to start bolting this baby up. And fortunately, all the holes lined up. Exactly. All right. Well, that's about. Nice. That's kind of what you're saying. And now we're using lock tape. Look, <laughs> way to <just> secure. <laughs> That's right. Shameless plug. You got to need the sponsors. Oh, look at that stuff. Mm. We are protecting our hands with pure red gloves. It's like bubble gum. My approach to make sure the camper floor does not move relative to the subframe over time is that there is a cupped centering washer that's a heavy duty three inch diameter washer that the cup goes up in through the subframe mount or hole and that keeps it or forces it to stay in place. And then I cut these aluminum uh, bars that perfectly fit each one of the subframe mounts because each one was ever so slightly different in length because of its bend and those hold it from moving forward or backwards and then there's a, another washer be underneath the bolt head before the bolt gets tightened down into the subfloor and this seemed to work really well. That P2 is where Curtis is. Where's, what's, this what's, is P3. Oh, it's the P2. No, I'm P2. Passenger side, yeah, yeah, number two. Yeah, no, starting from the front. Yeah, you got it right, right. Okay, good. Number one, number two. That just comes, that's flush virtually in the, in the uh... Basically, the uh, floor of the camper has gone on. 